resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hello, my Next Level friends. Super happy to be here with you in another episode of the Artist Next Level podcast. I hope you're having a great day. I have an awesome, awesome interview to share with you today. I sat down in my gallery with Laura Sivert and Joy Cuartero, where we talk about community engagement in the arts. Particularly if you're in a small city, this is an episode you do not want to miss. But before I talk about uh, my interview, I want to also invite you, if you are an emerging artist, to check out our brand new webinar, the Emerging Artist Success Blueprint. Totally designed for emerging artists to know where you are and how to get your art career to the next level. To sign up for the webinar, all you have to do, my friend, is go to our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com. Scroll through the page until you see the Emerging Artist Blueprint webinar. Totally free. We're doing it once a week, and I hope you can join us. So with me today, I have Laura Sivert and Joy Cuartero. Laura Sivert is Executive Director of Arts Quincy, America's first arts council. The organization serves 55 arts non for profit in visual arts, music, theater, dance, and the humanities in West Central Illinois, and increases arts access to 130,000 rural residents in over eight counties. Quincy was named America's most artistic small town by Expedia and Yelp in 2017 and 2018. Joy Cuartero is Marketing and Communications Director for Great River Economic Development Foundation. Her primary responsibility is delivering the organization's message, leading the community brand implementation efforts, managing local and regional events, as well as economic development initiatives for Adams County, Illinois. Her background includes non-for-profit management as a former Illinois Main Street Executive Director. Her work included leveraging local assets to enhance and redevelop Batavia's Illinois downtown district with dedicated volunteer efforts. And my friends, I'm super happy to introduce to you Laura Sivert and Joy Quarter. Well, hi Joy, hi Laura, how are you today? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for having us. Are you ready to take us to the next level? Oh, of course, always. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's definitely part of the job. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, right? Well, uh, Joy, uh, you and I, we go back uh, for quite a few years. We met back, I think, at uh, Water Street Studios. Yes. And it's been really fun, uh, you know, to over the years kind of follow each other through social media and see what we are doing. Sometimes we uh, end up in the same building for some reason yeah. you're for an art event or something. And so it's always fun to see what you're doing and see what's happening and uh, kind of to reconnect now. Yes. Uh, you guys are visiting here the Jovia Center. That's where we are recording this episode. Normally I do the podcast through uh, you know, a phone call or a Skype call, but it's really happy uh, at this episode because I'm here with you, both uh, sitting in the <laughs> same table at the fourth floor of the Jovia Center at 33 Contemporary. So. Very exciting, and, yeah. And you guys came for a quick tour. We came for a little bit of a visit, yeah. So I, uh, I you know, moved to Quincy. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. kind of far away from the suburbs of Chicago, but um, it was really nice. The first thing that I did, of course, there is kind of the same thing that I did when we met back um, mm -hmm. at Water Street Studios was jumped into the arts. Um, yeah. So I actually started helping out in Quincy with their arts fair, mm -hmm. um, which has transitioned now into a really cool collaborative effort uh, between arts and music and food um, and then joined their visitors bureau I now actually do economic development for the county there which is really wow. fun um, but part of economic development for us is also engaging in the arts and engaging in community um, and making sure that uh, you know we provide a lot of arts and culture in our area um, yeah. and that's actually how I met Laura was that's through right. a lot of the arts programming that um, was around town um, and it was really cool because we are of sort of that same um, mm. that same kind of mojo. We just like to kind of get things done and uh -huh. do thing, fun things for our community. So she's been a really great partner Super in cool. that. Yes. So before I talk to Laura for a second, Joy, tell me a little bit more about your background. I actually have no idea. Like, <laughs> did you grow up here in the Midwest or where yes. did you study? So How did you end up to where you are now? Basically, um, the short of it is that I uh, grew up in the Chicago suburbs. So I okay. uh, started off really in Chicago and in Rosemont and then moved my way more and more west. Um, I went to Columbia College in Chicago. So that's where I actually studied arts and entertainment media management. Okay. Um, from there, I actually got a job with a, a studio called um, HD Ready. We did 
primarily the show Soundstage, so I was actually working in music television production. Um, the post-production was actually in St. Charles, Illinois, and that was how I got to know the artists in Water Street. Okay. Um, so it was not Water Street at the time. It, they were just starting out, um, and they just needed some help to kind of get it going. So I actually took on more of the things that maybe some artists don't like to take on, which is the business <laughs> aspect. Right, exactly right. <laughs> um, so I actually helped to create mm -hmm. their 501c3 and the business and kind of uh, and basically help the artists um, out with connecting them with the studio spaces at Water Water Street. Mm -hmm. um, so co-founded Water Street Studios. They're actually celebrating 10 years yeah, this that's year. Exciting. That's so exciting. that's very cool. Um, but that's how I got to know community development. Yeah. I didn't know what it was at the time. Um, I then became the executive director for Batavia Main Street. Mm -hmm. And then that is how I met my husband. Yeah. And he moved me to Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that is, there's my, there's my bio. <laughs> there you go. But then uh, not only you moved to Quincy, but now you also were, were able to get involved in the arts and culture there, as you mentioned before, which we're going to talk a little more about too in a specific but super cool and it's because of you that now we also met Laura yes. and uh, Laura came also here to Chicago with you and uh, visiting um, the city and doing some some stops uh, one of them is here at the Art Center so Laura tell us also a little bit about you kind of your background now uh, where you grew up and uh, how you end up in your position there with the Quincy Arts Council that's right. I uh, So I actually grew up in Quincy and moved away and kind of swore I would never go back. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Quincy has a way of, uh, of bringing you back and uh, came back for family reasons. I went to the University of Iowa um, for my undergrad. I'm doing my master's at Mizzou right now. Um, but I actually got into retail marketing. So I was in the back end of the largest Hallmark chain in America as a kind of graphic designer and retail marketer. Um, for profit can be a lot sometimes. And uh, the, the Quincy has such an amazing art scene for a little bitty town. I like to say to, to place us in the world, we are 100 miles from the nearest Target store. That's, that's how, okay. how rural this is. But we have an amazing amount of art for the, for the area. So it's a little town of 40,000 people, but a big hub for the entire region mm -hmm. and along comes the this position as the executive director for the oldest arts council in America the very first one wow. um, and uh, someone kind of nudged me and said hey you need to stay a little longer in Quincy there's this perfect job for you mm -hmm. um, and I've been there for just about three years um, I uh, you know as a council we have 55 nonprofit arts organizations including mm -hmm. um, visual arts but also music theater um, a lot of history and humanities we even have an opera company so uh, it's amazing Amazing to see a little town have a have a little Muddy River Opera Company, um, and it's been a real uh, terrific change to get into the nonprofit world. That's awesome. That's fabulous. So tell me, what what is it like to walk into an organization that has that much history of you know the first day on the job, a his, uh, history of being the first art council in America? <laughs> you know what was like that for you? Well, it was kind of intense. Uh, there was a lot to learn coming from the for-profit industry where they just kind of gave me a budget and said, how are you going to spend it? Yeah, exactly. uh, that was the first big eye-opener. They said, hey, you got to go find your salary. <laughs> and I said, oh, OK. They said they're fine for you. Yes. Fine. Wait a second, what? <laughs> so there was a big uh, adjustment to get into nonprofit life and to sort of speak the lingo of nonprofits. Um, but also, right, the, 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 the weight of history and the weight of this amazing council that had done so much and spurred on arts council all over the country, um, you know, you want to carry on that legacy and you want to make sure that um, the, the thing that all arts organizations that are as old as mine face is how do you become relevant, how do you keep relevant for the people that you serve, and how do you speak to uh, today's, you know, rural Midwest and, and make them think, yeah, the opera is for me, the symphony is for me, the visual arts center is for me and my kids. So that's a real big part of what I do and I love the actual marketing and branding of that. Mm -hmm. um, and part of what we do too is this strong partnership with media. If I could tell artists out there any, any one thing, it's think about how media needs content as much as you need to be seen. Mm -hmm. So something that we do is partner with the newspaper. I do four live radio interviews a week. Mm -hmm. I do live television every single week. I have a magazine every right. single month. So, so there's just a lot of media out there because content generation is such a huge part of, mm -hmm. of the arts and keeping the arts viable. Right. And I gotta say, it's something that's really interesting, especially coming from Chicagoland. Um, a lot of people asked, you know, oh my gosh, Joy, where are you going? What is this place? Are you going to be okay? But I mean, the reality is, is that there really is, again, a lot of that 
um, that, that culture that you can find there. And it doesn't necessarily have to just come from the big city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, us being that hub uh, in Quincy, even though we are somewhat isolated, um, mm -hmm. it's really flourished there. And there's a lot of really amazing talent. Uh, and I think that I think people kind of get that idea that, you know, it don't, that, that kind of culture can only come from larger spaces, but you can see that people really grow culture even within these small places. And, and we talk a lot about, Joy and I talk a lot about, we collaborate on all kinds of projects. One of the most recent was we did a TEDx event. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about one of the advantages of a small town is you can do big things mm -hmm. on a small budget, on a small number of people, a couple of core people who can really make things happen. Um, we have conversations that sometimes are in the hallway. We work in the same building mm -hmm. in a civic center. And we pass in the hallway, and then we know the next task on both of our lists. Say, mm -hmm. oh, so, okay, you got the hospitality, and I'm going to call the media, and we're going to do this, that, or the other. Um, I think that the... Um, that the small towns have this advantage of being able to turn on a dime, where mm -hmm. maybe up here there's so much more to navigate in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that the positive thing about that, again, is that you just, the impact is also just greater. So um, it's not just uh, that we can do these kind of bigger projects, maybe a little quicker, but uh, it really does create such a larger impact in your community. Um, and they get to see um, these amazing things that can happen. And you get to kind of show them a little bit, because, you know, let's face it, sometimes you don't always get outside of your own right. few walls um, and you just kind of get to break down those barriers and show them something different. And our collaboration really puts that, uh, you know, Joy and I, she works in economics and I work it strictly in the arts, um, but we make that argument all the time in the arts community, why are we good for that city? Well, when we have strong collaborations, like my council with her organization that works on economic and workforce retention and development, we can dovetail together and make quality of life arguments and we can tell people this is a real gem on the Mississippi, this little tiny town has some really cool things to offer. And I can say it's, you know, $16 million worth of economic activity in in the area, it's uh, you know 600 full-time jobs in our area. It's uh, it's an amazing impact tax revenue of like $500,000 a year, and our town is a is a measurable amount. Um, so we make the economic argument for the arts um, as a pair too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm so, I'm so uh, excited that we're talking about this because uh, here in the Art Next Level program and the podcast, uh, the audience is very wide. So we have artists, you know, who are in big cities and also artists who are in small towns. And maybe some artists, you know, in a small town sometimes wishing that they can go to the bigger town, right? And so tell me a little bit about, you know, for, for in your case, you know, how do you do it so that the talent stays in Quincy and so that you can continue to foster uh, the people to who are doing great things to stay and, and be uh, active in the community and give to the community and enriching the community? I think a lot of that is really just providing the opportunity and giving them uh, the tools that they need to succeed. Um, so again, you know, we we are a small town, but there's a lot of really great minds. So as long as we can kind of get those people around the table, those things that those artists want to do are the things that um, you know. I mean, any of the folks, um, I think. The biggest part is just making sure that they've got those tools to be successful. So we do um, a lot of times try to, to foster that, foster collaboration, foster kind of that organic um, growth of arts in, in our town, and just make sure that they're visible. And that's really a big part of Laura's job is to make them visible. We're a visibility and problem solving, right? Somebody comes to us with a really bizarre problem, like we have a garden that was decimated uh, at the, uh, at, we have a veterans home for uh, the Illinois Veterans Home in our area by a big windstorm. And they said, we need to beautify this area, but we can't wait 25 years for the trees to grow back. What can we do? So we're problem solving with artists and bringing in muralists and thinking about what the folks in this is, particularly a dementia unit, um, might want to see. And, and uh, you know, I think making connections is something both you and I are really passionate about, is knowing who to call. Um, and maybe that's calling somebody up here in Chicago. Maybe it's somebody you know from all around the country. But the more we learn about people, the more we see the connections that can be made, we make them. And I think that's making space for the makers um, will will help them come and find an area like ours. Yeah, I think a lot of it is also just uh, just in the doing. So sometimes I think people are a little bit afraid to ask. Um, you know, so for instance, we have some uh, alleyways that just kind of needed a little something, and nobody really seemed to ask the question of, well, what does it take to paint it um, and put a mural up on it? And I think people get, uh, they think that maybe it's a lot of um, logistics or it's a lot of like legislation or something that you have to go through. So it's not, it's just not being afraid to, to ask the questions and to find the people that that's, will say yes to you. 
so that you can do the projects that you want to do. And our city has actually been pretty good with us in terms of being able to come uh, to come to them with a proposal and allow us to do those things. And, and a lot of our private developers as well, business owners and uh, property owners, they've been really open to that. So it's been really nice to see. That's really cool. And also, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have found, both of you have found, you know, in your positions and also dealing with government, dealing with community and so on? You know, what are some of the biggest challenges you had to overcome, you know, to be where you're at today? So, uh, you know, perpetually with the arts, you always, uh, the first thing that pops in your head is always funding, uh, <laughs> you know? And uh, sometimes I feel like we're sitting in the cornfields, jumping up and down, saying, look, we're down here, come, <laughs> come, come down see here. us. Yeah. So we're trying to make um, bigger impressions with regional funders and to reach out and make those. So, so we talked a little, a little earlier about the business case, right? So that's, I think, um, what I hope that I bring to the table is really the business mind to fund the people doing the amazing things, um, because it does it takes grantors and it takes um, supporters and it takes uh, members and it takes patrons that will come and see the performances or the gallery openings or whatever um, so so when you have to think through the business end of arts for the artists I think that's helpful for them and helps it grow but it's certainly one of the challenges that we're all facing um, you know Quincy mitigates a little of that with low cost of living I think you know you can have a nice a big uh, studio space in, in Quincy for quite a lot less than I think in, in a lot of places and we're trying to attract people in that way um, but uh, you know if we keep saying amazing things can come from this place too um, people will come to us t uh, to be a part of it and some of the things that have come out of the, the, the town lately have been really mind-blowing it's been amazing to be a part of it that's really cool yeah, and I mean, from sort of that, like, working uh, in collaboration maybe with some of um, our local government, um, I think a lot of it is sometimes just showing them. So um, many people, they get outside, they travel, they see a lot of things, and they want to bring that back home. Sometimes in Quincy, you can get a little bit isolated. Um, you know, it kind of has a little bit of everything where you don't necessarily have to leave <laughs> sometimes. And um, I think that it's just kind of showing showing some of those folks the things that can happen in Quincy. And you know how it is. You know, sometimes you take your surroundings for granted because right. you see it day in and day out so um, you know I think a lot of the things that we do is bring new ideas um, and just show them that we can do those things um, and it's possible that's great. We just had the opportunity today to uh, to walk through the Field Museum. Mm -hmm. I mean, an amazing institution um, with the uh, lead design director Alvaro Ahmet, um, and, show, and he showed us his world and what I think I would give this piece of advice to anybody is Remember what it's like to be a tourist in your own space. Um, when I have someone visit from out of town and come into Quincy, I think, oh, we should go check out the Underground Railroad home. We should see the amazing architecture. It's one of the most architecturally significant towns in America. Um, we should uh, go to the Villa Catherine. We have a very interesting uh, space on the river that is a Mediterranean Moroccan castle on the oh, Mississippi wow. River. You would never expect it. No. It's really amazing. <laughs> but, but you forget to be a tourist in your own space. Yeah. And we were just talking about it at the field. It's f so much fun to experience the wonder of someplace like the field, but it's amazing to, uh, to express the wonder of someplace like your hometown, too. Mm -hmm. If you're looking through the, those eyes, it's fun to, to show it off a little bit. Yeah, you can't forget how amazing your home is. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, I think it happens to everybody, even, you know, here in Chicago or anywhere else you live, you know, because you're used to the everyday bustle and hustle of the, of the work that, you know, you forget about your own jewels that are in your city yeah. until somebody comes to visit. Oh, yeah, what am I taking? <laughs> <laughs> right? And that is, that is a wonderful thing. And uh, also re very recently last year, uh, you both collaborated with a TED, you know, a TED event, which was the first one for Quincy, which is pretty excited about. Tell us, uh, you know, how did that idea start it? And, uh, you know, yeah. uh, how you put it together? Was it like bathroom conversations? It, it was again. <laughs> Who was watching yeah, the TED? Yeah. Let's do one of these. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I actually had a fever. <laughs> yeah. And I, and on, on a rare occasion, stayed home from work. Mm -hmm. And I was watching, I don't know, scrolling through social media, and I saw a TEDx talk, and I thought, I wonder how you do that and I got down a, a Google hole you know, <laughs> I started googling and pretty soon I realized we could do this we could do this so when the fever broke <laughs> and I went back to work I, I quickly called uh, Joy and, uh, and Megan and a couple of other really key people and brought them in and said we could do this um, to to host a TED event um, really just you have to have a passion for um, curiosity a, a real you have to be interested in everything so in our piece uh, our TED uh, event I'm really 
really proud to say had really a little of everything. Um, we had science, we had ethics, we had um, a philosopher, we had uh, dancers, Music and dance. mm -hmm. uh, experimental musicians with uh, with um, visual arts incorporated. I mean, just an amazing um, lineup. I could uh, c coming into the second event. I think, how can we ever do this again? It was so inspiring, and I was in in near tears by the end of it. But it's really just a matter of believing it's possible, believing that 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 little town Illinois can host something and move people and show them new ideas and make them curious about things they never thought about before. Um, and to a person, I mean, I think everyone was went away with something new, a new idea and something new Absolutely. to take home. Mm -hmm. No, it was really quite a, a nice event. And I think it's something that, again, I think people didn't know um, that it was something that we could do and I think in the end uh, just saying yes so when Laura sat there and asked hey do you think that you want to do this it's it's not about going through the steps of how, what it takes to do it it's just saying yes <laughs> yeah you got to start by that I think that too too much of the time people kind of hesitate again um, yeah. with a project like that thinking it's too big um, mm -hmm. but yeah if you say yes you can make it happen <laughs> and, that's and great. That's being great. intentional about building that team was really yeah. big to me too I know what I'm good at I'm good at media and I'm good at hosting and I'm good at being in front of people but I'm not great at logistics for hospitality and joy is really really <laughs> great at that and um you know and sourcing talent she had this great network that i didn't know about um and then we brought in and you know each person had their place we brought in somebody who has a huge theater background and of course part of ted is being able to put on a show and i thought i don't know how to work all the mics and the rigging and the, i don't have the first time i could probably open the curtain if you press me uh, <laughs> so we brought in the right people not too many just a couple of passionate people to say yes and, and absolutely that's my favorite thing uh, I want to yeah. I want to tell the eclipse story oh my yeah that is okay you tell the eclipse <laughs> well I, just, I don't know what you want to say I, about it <laughs> so we had the the big uh, actually we have the person here that instigated it <laughs> okay go okay. ahead well we we <laughs> Our, t we're, our town was very close to the total solar eclipse that was a couple So of we were not like 100%, but we were about 90%. Okay, I remember 98%. this now. 98%. 98%. Yeah. You know, so, and we didn't really have anything that was going on. And my friend Bree over here uh, said, hey, you're like 90%. Maybe I'll go to Quincy. Like, are you guys doing anything? And I looked on our calendar, and we actually were not doing anything. <laughs> As a town. As a town, yeah. And so this is like three days before the thing. Oh, it was uh, maybe like a week. Okay, maybe a week. <laughs> It was like, like yeah. Yeah. it was like ten yeah. minutes before. It. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Joyce says, "Hey, you think we could pull this off? Can we do an event on the riverfront, the size of the town, as big yeah. as the town?" I'm like, uh, "Yeah." So she said <laughs> yes. <laughs> so whenever one of us says yes, it's just we're gonna do it. And uh, yeah, in about maybe a week or a week and a half, I can't even remember. Not we just long. pulled in again some of those partners that you want to pull in, and uh, we put on a festival on the river <laughs> for the eclipse with no notice with no <laughs> notice. <laughs> because that's you know I mean you can't that's that's just gonna happen yeah. <laughs> so there was a deadline <laughs> there was a yeah. deadline yes. and people like that are so and there was, an eclipse coming, and so there was yeah it was coming there was there was no way to not <laughs> have that happen so and and to have somebody as infectious and as, as easy to say yes to as this says my partner in crime here um, has been really a blessing for me and has made it fun to be in this town and made it fun to to um, think about what's possible so is is it possible is it ideal to throw an entire town-wide festival on the river in a week and a half <laughs> No. Is it possible? possible. Sure it yeah. is. Yeah. And if you mobilize people and if they're excited and if there's and if they they've got a lot of enthusiasm behind it, you can say yes to a lot of things that you might not think that you're going to say yes to. Yes. Very cool. That's a wonderful story. I love it. So actually and actually last night I was in a meeting with uh, you know with another gallery uh, in town that was also looking at uh, in community engagement and bringing the community and so on. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about that. You know, in your experience, how did you get the community to be part of the, the things that you are doing, right? Because they also have their lives, their kids are doing things, and everybody's involved in things. But how do you get the community to buy in into the arts uh, and culture that you are bringing to the town? 
Well, I think it starts with making people feel invited to a space. Um, you know, I just wrote an article about, um, for, for my magazine, about taking little kids to the symphony. Because every time I take my little guys to the symphony, I've got an uh, almost two-year-old and a four-year-old, and they're like, I can't believe this four-year-old is sitting through this symphony, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's possible. And if people start to feel like it's possible and think of the strategies that I use, like we talk about the symphony, we talk about the instruments, we look them up on YouTube, we play them you know, at, at, in the house, and we conduct Moana on DVD about 150 <laughs> times. Um, but then we also you know, have emergency mom kits where we have suckers in case we get loud. And all this. <laughs> but by me taking my four-year-old there and then, and then writing an article about how to take your four-year-old yeah. to the symphony, I hope that people with young kids start to think, yeah, this is a great cultural experience for my kids. I could see my kids making it through at least half a symphony, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> at least half a symphony. Um, and making the space for people to feel like they're a part of it. This last symphony um, especially went um, to, the, to the heart of our region. It was called American Salute, and they did a bunch of Copeland pieces, um, for example. Um, I think that was a good example of our symphony listening to the community and what the community would like to hear. Um, same with our art center. Sometimes they pick thematic um, gallery exhibitions that speak to the experience of our community, and, and they sh as well they should. Yeah. And a lot of times it's really great because um, you know a lot, you have to go into a space, but we do have a lot of groups that like to kind of come outward. So we are, um, are actually in the process of working again with the city to really solidify um, an arts commission, um, and and that's actually because when we did start painting some of these murals and doing some of these um, more public art projects, we had a lot of other um, property owners that were interested in in hey, how can I get a mural on my on the side of my building? Um, I want to try that. I want to. Um, beautify uh, what I have. So I think, again, it's just kind of coming out out of those spaces, out of um, out of those buildings, and going into the public realm. Um, so it's really, really great to see different people that don't necessarily maybe go to the art center all the time, but want to be able to collaborate and do something in, in the arts field. So we've had really a lot of luck with that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And what arts councils can do is really aggregate that information. Like when somebody says, I'd like a mural on the side of my building, do you know an artist? I can say, yeah, I know three dozen artists. <laughs> <laughs> I know some great artists, and they have scaffolding, so let's make that yes. happen, you know? Yeah, exactly. and, and that's the function of a good, good council, I think. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, we're getting close to the end of the podcast, and I really want to thank you for, you know, for being here and so on. But I have a really good question for both of you individually, at a personal level. Okay. Something that I've been thinking about myself a lot recently is this idea of, you know, if I were to, if, with everything that I know right now, if I were to start from scratch my art career, and all I had was my phone, like if my wife, wife would drop me off in the other side of the world and I didn't have my contacts, I had anything, just a phone, you know, what would I do, right? How would I launch again? So with everything that you know, Joy and Laura, and Laura, you know, if you were to start right now in a different town, maybe in another part of the world, with what experience that you have with you, that you have gained, what would you do? How would you start again? Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like, in a way, maybe I have started I again. <laughs> I think she already did that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, again, moving to Quincy and not really knowing um, that environment um, and sort of uh, connecting again with that cultural community, um, it was a little bit hard because, yeah, you don't really know anybody. Um, but at the same time, I think, so having what I n know, the point really that I made for myself was to break through uh, breakthrough and just get to know people and get involved okay. right so the point is is that I think being involved with the community is the first and foremost because I wanted to make this new community my home so what do I you know how do I want to live what are the things I want to see what are the things I want to experience um, rather than maybe letting that all come to me um, I wanted to kind of have a little bit of control in that and make sure that those things happen so um, for me anyway that was what was when I started fresh it was just jumping in and getting involved and then getting to know the right people so. super good advice <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks so much. How about for you, Um I I have uh, it's kind of a running joke with my 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 people that I have Mad Lib friends, um, oh, yeah. and my Mad Lib friends always fill some strange uh, uh, some some strange 
pieces, thing, pieces right? Yeah. So, um, for instance, I have a, a good friend who is an engineer in Iowa who plays the baritone. <laughs> I have a silversmith in Utah who made the necklace I'm wearing. Uh, I think it's getting to know people and asking questions mm-hmm. and starting to be able to make the connections. Mm-hmm. Supporting each other is such a huge part of the arts. Like, I want to be at, when, at the, when I first got this job at the, at the Arts Council, um, I went to an event about every 10 minutes, it seemed like, but at least two or three or four a week, because I wanted to know what they were, I wanted to know all those organizations, and I wanted them to see me support them. Mm-hmm. And when, when I support them, people would comment on it, oh, I can't believe you were out at this little event, at this little recital or whatever. And I said, well, I should be. And then they started coming to the things that I was up to, and there's this um, kind of unstoppable force once you start to support each other. Um, it matters to go see other people's gallery opens, go, gallery openings, because they'll come to yours too. Yeah. And that's how you start to build a network, and you'll have Mad Lib friends like I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is wonderful. I think at the end of the day, both of you said it's about people, right? It's about people. And when that happens, amazing things and amazing opportunities happen. So, and I think that's why we're on this table too, right? Yeah. I think that is yeah. awesome. That's <laughs> fabulous. And I think that creates a great uh, blueprint for our friends listening right now who maybe at that point of maybe they want to start something, maybe they want to start a group or an organization in their own city, in their own town. And you know the thing has like get started. So I think that we have a nice blueprint <laughs> on that. Thanks so much. So as we wrap it up for the day, uh, tell me where can we find you on social media? Where can we find the Quincy Arts Council? Where can we find about your TED Talk as well? And uh, or or also for you social media, whatever you're at. <laughs> um, we're artsquincy.org online. Of course, we're on, uh, on Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, personally, uh, I'm at Twitten by Laura on Twitter and uh, also at uh, uh, tedxquincy.com. We uh, will be opening applications for TEDxQuincy soon um, for the next installment, which will be in November um, of this year. So um, it's going to be exciting. We're looking for all kinds of people. So if you're out there thinking, hmm, I could give a TED Talk, we want to talk. Um, but that's TEDxQuincy.com. And uh, yeah, I'd love to, love to talk to folks. Awesome. How about for you, Joy? So I would say, actually, just because I really promote um, Quincy in general, and I think everybody should come and visit me, uh, <laughs> come and visit Laura and I, um, just go to cquincy.com. That's just S-E-E, Quincy.com. And to kind of see what we are all about, um, you know, it's a really lovely town, and I'm falling in love with it every single day, and it's really wonderful. Awesome. <laughs> be a part of it. I know. <laughs> <Part of> it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Super. Well, thanks so much for being here. I really enjoyed this conversation. It was really fun. Hope you enjoyed your Chicago visit. Thank you so much. I have to uh, pay back that visit and go visit you guys as well pretty soon. So I want to also thank all our friends who are listening today. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. That would make me so, so super happy. So thanks so much, and I will see you at the next level. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.